Hey, welcome back to DA Griffin Hobby. Today I'm going to be taking a closer look at the Lionel 6 8406 scale Hudson. Uh, I've run it for a few days now and uh, I think I can take a short break from running it to actually open it up, clean it out, lube it up, and get it running a little bit smoother. I've seen a jump in subscribers in the last week and it's it, it's fantastic. Uh, I want to say thank you to everybody that's been with me for a while and to all the new people, welcome aboard. Um, thanks for joining us. I hope you enjoy the videos. I really appreciate everybody coming along with me. And So with that being said, uh, let's get into it. I'm going to open up this 783 and see what it looks like. I don't have any repair instructions on this, so hopefully I don't hit any snags. Uh, I tried to do a quick search online, but did not come up with any diagrams. So hopefully I don't have any problems. Okay, so here it is. The 68406 Lionel Scale Hudson. Okay, so far so good. Something like this one, I'm not sure of this exact procedure. I just like to go one screw at a time to see what happens. So it is missing one of the marker lenses. So I'll have to try to get one of those. So I'm going to assume it's these four screws. A situation like this, you can always just loosen the screws a few turns before taking anything out. See, just a couple turns. The boiler is loose so I'm gonna go with that and I'm gonna try to keep the screws separated for the front and back of the engine I say try because I usually mess up at some point but it's all good the old wiggle and pull here okay I have to open that up. I don't like how tight that wire is. The wires seem like they're still flexible. The E unit's been working very well, so I'm not gonna mess with that. All right, so I'll take the brush plate off, clean the brushes and the face of the commutator. Make sure the shaft here is properly lubed. Get in there and try to clean out some of the uh, gunk and then maybe I'll just oil it and put it back together I always say especially when it's the first time taking something apart if you're uncomfortable or not sure you remember where everything goes snap a picture first that way you can revisit it later make sure you get everything back where it's supposed to go Brushes are out. The commutator face is definitely uh, a little dirty and scratched up. Hopefully a good cleaning will help. That is an interesting coupling. It's a rubber grommet in between the two. I'm sure that would make a pretty crazy noise if that bushing was gone or deteriorated. So that's definitely something to check. You want to make sure not to leave any fibers in here. Uh, you want to make sure that you don't remove that washer. Make sure there's not too much carbon built up in these grooves. Clean it up. Sand down the uh, brushes a little bit. Hopefully make them a little smoother. Also, for our first cleaning, I always like to just do the basics. See how much of an improvement that makes, because there's really no point in taking something completely apart if you don't need to. These look pretty clean. These brushes are pretty clean, too. Overall, I wonder how much it's been run over its life, if it was serviced or just never got too dirty, because those brushes 
look practically new. Okay, I'm sure there's a right way and a wrong way to do this. I'm not familiar with any other way, so I'm just taking the brush and turning it very lightly on a piece of very fine paper. I don't know if you can see the circle marks it's leaving. So I don't know what this is, 2200, 2500. I'm just trying to get some of the uh, shine back to the end of the brush. I don't like to go side to side. Um, you're more likely to wear it unevenly. An unevenly worn brush is not good. So you probably can't tell. Um, but under the magnifying glass, this one that I've been putting on the sandpaper is definitely a little more shiny and even. This one's got some edges, so I'm gonna try to clean that up. Now, I've said this many times, and I'll say it again. I'm not a professional. I'm just somebody who enjoys the hobby. So if there's a better way to do any of these things, let me know in the comments. Let everybody know in the comments. I'm okay with that. Challenge me. I'm good with that. Uh, it's very easy to get contamination on those brushes by over-oiling the motor. There's too much oil here. will spread out before I put it back together. I'm just going to put a drop on the end of the armature shaft. I'm going to put one more drop on the armature from this side. When you, want it, when you put those brushes in, you want to make sure they move freely. It's always nice when that goes back together easy. Just make sure you tighten it down evenly and securely. And that the screws are tight, but not over tight. Because a loose or improperly installed brush plate will definitely affect the way your engine runs. Okay. Part one done. It's also a good time to make sure, check everything and make sure none of the wires came off. Add a couple drops to the wick. Okay, so there's no reason for there to be lubrication between these two plates here. Don't break, don't break. Fantastic. Ooh. A little gummy in there. Maybe it's not gummy. Looks greasy. Oh, some of that, uh, hmm. it's a little hard. All right, so I spent some time cleaning a lot of the grease out of here. There's definitely still going to be some down on the bottom. Um, and I cleaned out the gear teeth. So I put Lebel 107 just a dab on each axle where it touches the body. I'm going to use the 106 on the big gear here. I'll just spin it a few times. Well, while I was running it, I noticed a bit of a jerky motion. And uh, as I've got it apart here and I've been spinning the wheel, I noticed it binding right about here. I'm wondering if it's this drive rod here because it is bent uh, a bit. So I'm going to try to take that off and straighten that out. Move this out of the way for the moment. And I'm going to clean this up. I don't know if it matters which direction these face, but this is the way I got it out. So I'm going to try not to mess that up. Now for the gear, this thick grease that's on here is good, I guess, but it's not really what you want in the bushing. So I'm just gonna clean this all up and then get that lubed and reinstalled. thrust bearings there.
as the lubricant distributes in there, kind of feel it get smoother. Okay, so that's cleaned and lubed and put back together. So now I'm going to install the plate over the top. All right, now that that's all back together, I'll take it out to the layout and give it a quick spin and see how it's doing. All right, this is the part of the program I like to call the moment of truth, where we find out if Dave did something really, really dumb and messed something up. Uh, hopefully I did not. I can't even think of something I would have done wrong in there. So let's find out, shall we? Fingers crossed. You can see that binding. Fine, fine. Right there. Hopefully that's just this rod that's got a bend to it. Because I would like this to run about that speed if I can. But it's not going to do that with a bent rod. But everything... That's working nicely. Smoother than it was before, other than the binding. So I'm gonna see if I can straighten out that side rod and if that helps, and I really hope it does. So I'm gonna fiddle with this for a minute and see if I can straighten it out without taking everything apart. I don't want to keep messing with it because I felt like if I did, I was going to break it. Um, it's better and forward. But reverse is still an issue. But that, I'm okay with that because I'm going to run it forward 98% of the time. But that's at 5 volts, so that's pretty low. You can see it still has a bit of a hesitation to it when that main side rod hits the bottom. Now, is it possible that it's something else other than the side rod that's a little bit? Is it the smoke mechanism? Maybe. Because that's, you know, that's got a lot of tension to it right there. Of course, let's watch that and see what happens. Okay. Nope, it's not touching right there. Because right there with the side rod on the bottom, it is done pushing the lever for the smoke mechanism. But backwards, it hits it right here, but it's already slowing down. So I don't think that's it. Everything is as cleaned and lubed as it's going to be for now. Um, I'm not gonna continue to play with the the drive rod because I don't want to break it. I had to strongly resist the urge to play with it when I got back inside. Um, I cleaned off the shell with a toothbrush just to get some of the loose dust. I'm not going to do anything else with that now. Uh, but before I put it back together, I'm replacing the light bulb with an LED. It's just an Amazon pack. Model lights. I just fed the wires for the LED through the base of the light bulb. And I'll just put that in place and then snap the light bulb base and it'll just hold it there. So that's the plan. I'm thinking I'm just going to attach the ground here. And there you go, LED light. Okay, so I'll finish up putting it back together and then we'll take it back out to the layout. 
Okay, so it's all back together, lightly dusted, cleaned, lubed, oiled, whatever else. Uh, I installed the LED light. So it's definitely running better. The thing I'm left with is do I try and find the side rod and hope that fixes the slate binding. Uh, the next thing to do would be to take a look at the tender, see if I can get the sounds of steam and the whistle working. Um, I think that's it for now. Let's haul some freight. I hope you enjoyed the video, found it interesting or helpful. Thank you again for watching. I appreciate all of you taking your time out to watch and like and comment. Again, I just wanted to say thank you to everybody who's subscribed, uh, who's either been with me for a long time or just coming aboard. I really, really appreciate every one of you. Um, as always, reach out, say hi, and uh, thanks for watching. My name's Dave, and I'll see you next time on DA Gripnavi.